We are back at Bell Hill Farms in Hollister, California, and Janet Losey is going to teach us how to turn this old t-shirt into this great pot holder. Janet, thank you so much for having us back up at Bell Hill Farms. It was so much fun last year when we, you taught me how to do the rag rug weaving. That was really a lot of fun. And I think you even have something better in store for us today. And you're going to show us how to make loopers? Yes, to make the uh, pot holder, you, first you need to know how to make a looper. And so we take a t-shirt and the first thing we do is we cut off the hem. And you don't have to be too careful about it, just get it off. And then you cut little strips, and I'll just cut one to show you the process. Is it like two inches or just your eyeball? Yes, it's it? about two inches, okay. and I just eyeball it. And then I'm going to cut the seams off the edge here. And now we have two big rectangles. Because you folded the t-shirt in half. I folded it in half. Okay. Now I'm going to take this one and started with the folded edge. I'm going to cut up the center like this. And then I'm going to round the edges. So you're going to cut right to about a half an inch to the edge? Right. And then to make the looper, you just pull the t-shirt. I love that. And you have your, your looper. This is great. Because you know when the kids do those little kits that they buy, they're like nylon and stuff. This is great because it's all recycled t-shirts that you're using to do this. Right. And so let me do a blue one. And then we'll get started. And I always work in two colors so you can see the contrasting in the, in the weaving. Oh, can I pull it? You can pull it. <laughs> like a little kid, I want to pull it. So just give it a big tug? Yep. Oh, that's so cool. I just love that. Whoops, sorry, a little carried away. But yeah, that's really neat. Now, Janet, this is called warping? Right. And I'm a quilter, so I save my salvages. But if you don't have salvages to work with, you can just cut pieces of fabric one inch wide and then I take two pieces of salvage like this and I'm going to string them together so that I can do the warp and so I put them together like this fold it over and I'm going to cut a little slit like this and then you put them back match up the holes and then you're going to pull this in through the bottom oh, and it just locks it in cool. and it locks it in Okay. I forgot about that. And I when really you get like a that. whole bunch of them strung together, I just roll them into a ball so I'm ready to warp my loom. So you just keep adding then the next to the next end to the next end and right. So you just right. have this big long piece. And then I roll it in a ball okay. and we're ready to go. And so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make a big loop. And this is your brand new pot holder frame. Right. I'm so excited about this. Okay, so here's my loop. I'm going to hang that on the first peg and just go back and forth. And when I get to the end, I'm going to make another loop on the bottom one, and then we're ready to weave. Okay, so slide this one in. So here's one that's already done, and we're ready to start the weaving process. Now tell me a little bit why you have a rubber band on this. When you first start the weaving process, sometimes the loops from the warp want to pop off. And so if you put a little rubber band across the top and bottom, it holds oh, it in place. Oh, good tip. I like that. Okay, so this is, we're on the next one now. And I've got a little bit of weaving on the top and a little bit on the bottom. And we're going to work towards the center. And so let's just do a few more. So this really goes pretty fast, Janet. Yes, compared to a rug, the pot holders are done in no time. And I think even kids could do this. So it's just always over and under, over and under. Over and under. Okay, so when you get to the end of the first row, one of the very important steps is to go through this loop on the first peg. And so we're putting this, only one strip has to go through. And that's when you remove it from the loom, then it'll all hold together. And so this one is around the peg, and then we're going to pull this one. So both strips go around the peg and the first strip, and then you just start back in the other direction. Okay, Janet, can you show us how we're going to finish up the um, pot holder? Yes, we're going we're to weave.
from both sides towards the center and the, the, the top is going to meet the bottom right in the middle. And so what you're going to do now is you're going to take two from one direction and tie a knot. It's kind of like when you're tying a package. And then two from the other direction, tie a knot. Just like that. And then you're ready to pull it off of the loom. And so we're going to remove the rubber bands. Oh, this is the scary part for me. And then we're going to pull the pins out. And then you just pop it off. And it's all done. All you got to do is take a crochet hook and weave the ends in. Okay, so I'm going to pull these through to the back. And turn it over. Pull this one through. And I just weave these back and forth, front to back, until um, I've done it three or four times, and then just cut off the ends, and it's finished. And so when you cut the ends off, Janet, it just kind of disappears right into... Right. Right, so you would cut it pretty close into there. Right. Perfect. Right. And let's bring a couple of the other ones that you've already done out to show our viewers. This is just really cool. You can see here's the little pieces have been cut off, but it doesn't affect. And what I really like about this is, like, you could grab something from the oven like this and then you put it right on your counter and I mean boy that's really nice and thick too. Yes it'll work as a pot holder or as a trivet. Oh trivet there we go that was the word I was looking for Janet. Thank you so much for another great project and what do we say when creativity knocks open the door.